What's up guys, I am in Albuquerque, New Mexico, outside of one of, if not the best MMA gyms in the world, Jackson Wink Academy. Now this is home of John Jones, Holly Holm, Michelle Waterson, and tons more UFC legends. Now my goal in life and with Fight Tips is to become the best possible coach I can be. And I'm gonna sit down and interview who many believe to be the best MMA coach of all time, Greg Jackson. So let's go pick his brain a little bit. Uh, I got started in martial arts because it was a very practical need, so I didn't watch a Bruce Lee movie or something like that. Um, I grew up in the South Valley of Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is a uh, very Hispanic culture. Um, it's also very poverty driven. Um, we have some of the worst indicators in the country as far as, um, you know, we're not, we don't have a lot of money. There's a lot of economic disparity. Um, it can be a little bit uh, violent. Um, there's some of the best people in the world that live there. Yeah living right next door to some of the worst people you ever met. So a lot of those kids really didn't care. If you could do math or soccer, the only thing they really cared about is can you fight? It's that machismo culture from the kind of the Hispanic uh, Mexican tradition. Um, right. So I figured I better learn how to do that stuff because I was uh, a goofy white kid. So I figured I better, well, I better learn how to do some fighting. So uh, I pretty much dedicated my life from about five years old on. My friend Brad Valdez, uh, kind of got me into fighting in kindergarten. I met him and his great family that I was kind of raised by uh, in kindergarten. That's why I always say he got me into this whole thing. So for me, I never wanted to be a coach. Hmm. Um, and when I was 17 years old, I opened up my first school uh, because my friends wanted, you know, I was defending myself and, and uh, fighting here and there. And people wanted to know how I was doing what I was doing. And so I started training my friends. We had kind of a group of us and then uh, we opened the school up, more people came, the UFC started, um, then that was, the, in those days, it was the, basically the bare knuckle stuff, there was no rules or anything like that, yeah. so my students talked me into doing that stuff, they wanted to go compete there. For me, it was unrealistic, because you know, you're a stupid kid, you're like, it's not the street, bro, you're only fighting one guy, that's why we're going to train, you know what I mean, for me, it was always you're fighting two or three, but, you know, it's, it is what it is, yeah. so I was a moron, um, but they talked me into it, so they wanted to go do it, and then they started winning everything. And then 25 years later, here I am, basically. We just kept winning. We won a bunch of grappling tournaments. Then we won a bunch of uh, MMA stuff. And then we took all like the smaller shows, like the King of the Cage, we took all their world titles, and then the mid-level shows. And then finally the UFC, we've had a bunch of title holders there too. So here I am. So that leads me to my next question, which is like, because I, I struggle with this. Do you believe in training MMA as a, as a whole, or should someone train a base art like wrestling or striking? And then... that that used to be true, where you started and something. But no, the whole the whole now is fine. Huh. Um, you can have a base that you come from, but the days of like the wrestler versus the kickboxer are pretty well over. I mean, you, you right. have somebody with a wrestling background, and that's fine. Um, and certainly, wrestling, in my opinion, gives you the toughest mentality of any mm -hmm. of the combat sports, as far as the base. But yeah, training in MMA is where it's at. Like. Yeah. Maybe you can be a great wrestler and still get killed kickboxing. Right. Um, how many fighters do you have? Like, how many are you actively oh, coaching man. right now? I don't know. It's a lot. We probably have between 70 and 100 pros in here right now. How do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> so I don't work with everybody individually. We have a great coaching staff, and the coaches, honestly, are much better than I am. Um, so I probably work with, like, 15 or 20 myself. How do you find it? How do you trust coaches? How do you find a team? Well, now that's that setting a team culture, setting um, a uh, finding the right coaches. A lot of times they weed themselves out. Some coaches are in it for them, you know, the glory, or they think it's a way to get themselves famous, or they're not into the grind, or they get entitled, or they just don't know what they're doing. And so, yeah. um, it, being a coach is hard. You have to have the personality to, to put up with a bunch of little stuff. But you have to have the knowledge base. I always say I don't mind crazy. Like, I'm not saying, nobody in here is saying, I don't mind crazy, but you have to be able to deliver the goods. In other words, if you're crazy and you have, you're a great artist or you are a coach that's brilliant, um, then I, okay, I'll put up with crazy. Hmm. If you're crazy and you have no idea what you're doing, nope. Right, right. Know. So, and that's that's for coaching. But mm -hmm. fighters too, you feel same. the same way? Yeah, same. I'll put up, and listen, I don't like, 
if they're going to be disrespectful to coaches or whatever, see ya. You know, right. have a nice day. It's got to be a two-way street. They respect us. We respect them. Everybody's cool. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, it, if they're a little crazy, it's good. Huh. That's interesting. Um, how much of your training that you do with your fighters would you say is physical, and then how much of it is mental? Like, are you a mind coach? Are you a therapist? Yeah, all of the things. So yeah. you do. Um, my body's pretty damaged at the moment, but mo a lot of it was physical, 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 and mental. There's no one to be a coach. You have to be able to do everything. Yeah. Now I'm try as I'm getting over my injuries. I'm trying to move back into doing a lot of the physical stuff. But um, you have to be a mind coach. You have to be. There's not. If you're a good coach, you don't have one area that you do well. That doesn't mean you're not specialized. Like we have striking coaches. Striking coaches mm -hmm. are also mind coaches. Are also conditioning coaches, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. All right, so let's fast forward to uh, to fight day. How do you get, what's what's it like backstage? Let's say it's a championship fight. What are you saying to Holly before she fights Ronda? It's all the same. Like you, that's, and that's the, that's the part where movies have trained you instead of reality. So movies are, everything's dramatic. Rocky gets ready. Dun, 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 Rocky, you gotta get out there and you gotta win and the music's going. You're like, get him, Rocky. Thor, hit him with your hammer, and then the music comes, and the army, and then the, it. That is where you learn everything about combat. You maybe you you spar your friends, maybe you fight a little bit, but what influences you is what you watch in the movies. So the more dramatic those moments are, the more real they are. In fact, in other words, if it was a boring movie where I was like, "All right, let's go do our job," when you walked out and you fought, you'd be like, "Yeah, so." Right. Where's the uh, where's the lead? At? You know the what I mean? Where, yeah. Right. Where's all that? Because yeah. that's not good. It's yeah. just not a good movie. So right. you, you can't go into those situations where everything matters, reminding yourself how everything matters. Because then you're distracted. What's the process? The process is going out and executing your job. And if you're like, this is the biggest fight of my life. Are you th are you thinking about the fight? No, you're thinking about the drama. Right. Right. Because that's what you've been conditioned to do. So fighting Ronda and fighting. I don't know, anybody else should be the same. Mm. Now, obviously, you're going to be a little more nervous. You have to control nerves and stuff, but that is calming yourself down, not being like... <laughs> that, that stuff, that hyping yourself up, you don't need to be any more hyped. You're going out to fight a person that is very, very skilled, and they're trying to knock you unconscious or tap you out. So, like, you don't need to be more... I'm not hyped enough. This right, situation's right. boring. Will you motivate me a little bit? That, that's not how that works. Right. Now, different fighters are different. Sometimes you gotta, you know, get in there, get in their butt a little bit, and be like, "Listen, yeah, focus in." Let's, yeah. But that's a focus deal. It's not a like. If you're at that level fighting that, you you know how to go out and do it. Hmm. So that's and that's a very very important thing. I think that culturally as Americans that we are always demanding. We don't appreciate skill as much as we appreciate drama. We, a good fight to most of the fans is standing in front of each other and just seeing who's more courageous because that's drama. And we love drama. We've been conditioned that drama. I mean, I'll tell you what, writers in Hollywood are so brilliant. I love watching that stuff. Like, I'm a huge dance fighting fan. People are like, can you watch movies about fighting? I'm like, heck yeah. yeah I yeah. love, like, the crouching tiger hindrance. Like, the, the dance fighting is so entertaining because it's not real. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm sorry, John Wick isn't going to have 15 firefights, maybe get hit once, kill 18. Like, it doesn't work that way. But it's awesome. It, it, it's super fun. Yeah. I love watching it. I'll get, I, listen, I'm cheering Thor on. Hit him with your hammer, Thor, get him. That's great. It is what it is. But it's not, I mean, that has nothing to do with combat. That yeah. has nothing to do with it. Um, the, the, uh, it could be inspiring. And so I think you, you get that from movies where the best fights are the most. So you don't really appreciate somebody jabbing and moving and not get hit. I think Muhammad Ali would have a much harder time in our era. Um, because he didn't used to knock everybody out. He knocked some people out. He did a great job. But a lot of his fights, especially coming up, he's just jabbing dudes to death. And, you know, hit combinations and move again. Even um, Mayweather now. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't have many fans. Right, exactly. So yeah. people don't like that because yeah. it's not dramatic. Right. I watch Rocky. Right. And I need this to match that. And when it doesn't, so you're not appreciating the skill. Huh. And some fans do, but it, it's a very interesting thing to me, the phenomenon of fighting itself and then what is it right like it is a pressure release for society so a nose fan i'm sure you guys get this on youtube all the time what kind of a person you are to me is dictated by how you're a fan of something so if they watch your work and they say thank you so much for you know doing this video or whatever i think it was awesome you're like oh there's a positive person but if they're like your hat is stupid and i don't you know what i mean like right well of course right because they're angry they're they're mad 
And so I read this great book, um, Trickster Makes This World. It's an amazing book, and it really shifted my view on, it's a, it's a pressure release, right? Like, what is Mardi Gras? It's this big party before you, you really, your, your religion really constrains you into, these are the rules, you know, Lent or whatever, you've got to give this stuff up. But before you do that craziness, you know, there's a huge, everyone's going crazy, it's, this, it's carnival, it's, Mar it's these pressure releases. So your fans need a place to put that anger. They wake up and they're like, this is stupid. Mm. So I would much rather them yell at us as, as uh, entertainers, I'm not an entertainer myself, and happily not, but my fighters, or you, than beating their kids, right? Like, they're angry and they're looking at their kids and they're like, you're a stupid kid. It's much better to yell at us because your job as an entertainer is to take that pressure off, right? Like now, they, they're steam, and hopefully they feel a little bit better. Maybe they don't, maybe they're just so angry. But that's what kind of a person they are, it's dictated. But when you see something, how do you react to it? So we have a lot of fight fans that are like, oh, you, you're a coward. You just met, right? Because they have to, oh, it's in them. They have to get it out. And that's a very important societal huh. function, I think. So oh, it, yeah. for me, it was very interesting coming to those realizations that it's not just skill. Fighting has very little to do with the actual. Again, Mayweather has very few fans. It's beautiful to watch for a guy like me. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. But to a fan, you're boring, man. You're just a, right, there was right. no Rocky music in the entire <laughs> fight. And I was waiting. <laughs> Right. So, and then you deal with those people on the spot. You got the booze and stuff. If, right. If it is a boring fight. Absolutely. So, I, I want to get some advice from you. How do you be a good corner man? Like, I feel like the fights that I did corner, I said way too much. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was too much for the fighter to pay attention, to listen, to follow. Right. And then in between rounds, what are the things that you're saying? Well, so it's the same thing. Remember that you're in a, you're in a situation where it's not a movie. There is somebody trying to whack you in the head hard enough to knock your consciousness from you. So what does that mean? It means that you need to calm down. First you gotta get their heart rate down. Or you can tell them everything in the whole wide world and they're not gonna hear a word of it. Yeah, yeah. So you get their heart rate down first. They're breathing, using your using kind of combat breathing style to get their parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system in line. So you get that heart rate down as slow as you can get it. Then give them one or two things to work on. They're not gonna listen to anything else. But mostly it's calming them down, staying positive, and then you have to read the fight. You have to see, sometimes your game plan is right out the window, and you could tell your fighter, do this, and he's not going to do it. So what do you do? You've just told your fighter, uh, do a takedown. Yeah. No, he, he's, he just feels like he can't get there. Yeah. So how do you adjust to that? So a corner man, for me, what a good corner man is, is like improvisational jazz. You have to know when to push, you have to know when to pull, you have to know when to change the timing of things, uh, you, you have to be able to, to read the jam session yeah. and then accordingly contribute to that situation. If you can't do that, it doesn't have anything to do with information. Information is the cursory level, it's like a beginning, it'd be like uh, working a camera. Like if you think that your interviews are about where you point the camera, it's important, like, right? you have to have the information, you have to point the camera at the person you're interviewing. But there's a million people right now that are pointing cameras and trying to interview people, right? right. Like, so what, what is it really then? It's getting to know your interviewer, it's asking relevant questions, it's so that everybody will learn. And that's what fighting is. The technique, like, oh, everybody does these breakdowns. Well, he uses the jab and he uses 15% degree angles. <laughs> that stuff's important, but it has little to do with fighting. Right. Fighting is what can you make your guy do? How do you adjust to what's happening? And where do you go when things go wrong? That's what cornering is about. Do you, I heard you earlier say you don't read, but how do you... Oh, I read all the time. I was being oh, okay. sarcastic. Yeah, so could you recommend anything? Depends okay. on what subject you want. I mean, that, listen, Trickster Makes This World. If you're doing in your line of work, Trickster Makes This World. Okay. It's an amazing book. It's about, well, it's about a lot of things, but it's about the joints of society, like what joins us together, what culturally, and he goes, he's very, Joseph, did you ever read The Power of Myth? read Joseph Campbell first. So read Joseph Campbell's Power of Myth, kind of get a, uh, an overview of the uh, similarities between what it means to be human and all these different cultures, and then read Trickster Makes This World. And that, for your job, that would be an amazing yeah. thing, I think, for you. Awesome. All right, uh, last questions. What makes, what attribute, what is the most important attribute for a, a good student, a good fighter? Mm -hmm. That's a hard question. Craziness. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. It, you'd have yeah. to. Have, they they do have to be a little crazy. I mean, think about getting into a cage and 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 fighting somebody for money and attention. I mean, that's not normal, right? Then that's fine. Like that's, that's good. Listen, I'd much rather hang out with that crazy than like the CEOs of a boardroom that are like you know screwing their workers over crazy. Like that's not a crazy that I would want to be any kind of a part of. Like just, that's boring crazy to me. Sure. At least this crazy is fun and entertaining. And you know that they're you know they're usually pretty real people. 
Um, I don't think there's one attribute that you that you can say this is what you're looking for. It's a combination of things. So the one attribute would be a combination of things. You have to be athletically talented, like at the top level. So if you if you want to go to the top level, you have to have athletic talent. Um, you have to be coachable. You have to be able to deal with everything outside of the fighting. The fighting is the easy part for most of these guys. It's the success or failures. And some people are very good at failure. They, they thrive when they fail. And then as soon as they get successful, they lose their mind. And you'll see that pattern over and over. They fail, they get super humble. Um, coach, I'm really sorry. Can we please? And then they follow the plan and then they lose their mind again and mm. off they go. So they cannot, they don't have it in their personality systemically to be successful. As soon as success knocks on the door, they self sabotage. So there's a lot of talented people that will never get that far because of that self sabotage. And then there's people that are very good at success and terrible at failure. You need to be good at both. You need to be good at uh, dealing with disappointment, especially on the way up. All fighting is for a young fighter is disappointment. The guy didn't make weight. He agreed to the fight, but then he fell through. I lost the fight, but I thought I won the fight. All of that is all fighting is, just disappointment. I missed weight, because I didn't know exactly mm. what I was doing. Disappointment, 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 disappointment. If you can grind through that, then you're usually pretty good. Mm. So it's a combination of factors that give you success. And how about as a coach? What do you think is most important? As coaches, uh, I think I think there's two things. One is you always have to be innovative. You always have to um, think of new and interesting things because fighters are searchers. They're always looking for the next thing, the next thing, the next. It's an arms race, right? Their opponents are looking for the next thing. They're looking for the next thing. So you constantly have to feed them. And then it has to be about the fighter and not you. That's, a, that's the hardest one for most coaches because, again, they get pretty successful. They do an interview. And then they're like, you know what? I am a great coach. <laughs> It's yeah. about me. You know, right. I deserve, oh, right. you're lucky to work with me instead of being humble and... Selfless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you have to have a balance, right? You can't do everything for free, but right. um, yeah, it, it, that, I think it's very hard. And as soon as you get successful at it, it gets much harder. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Coach. No worries. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no worries. Thanks for getting out. Trust me. Again, I just want to thank Coach Jackson for taking the time to sit down and uh, do that interview. Again, the information that he shared with me was priceless and I truly appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in on this journey, on this tour. It's been awesome, but at this point, we're ready to go home. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the underdogs.